The malicious plan to end the Wales' blissful marriage by Meghan and Harry has been leaked. You're dating Kate, while I am dating William. A toast to good company. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Royal Family News Update, where we will be bringing you the latest breaking news on the notoriously hypocritical royal couple, Harry and Meghan Markle. Starting this Thursday, you can watch the series finale of Harry Meghan on Netflix. The latest trailer shows the Duchess of Sussex's lawyer saying, there was a battle against Meghan, which has sparked rumors that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have more to say about their families back in the United Kingdom. The media, royal protocol, and the couple's interactions with senior members of the firm are just some of the topics that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have covered in previous episodes. Although they didn't name any specific royals by name, the general public has assumed that the couple was referring to King Charles III, Prince William, and Kate, Princess of Wales in their comments. Harry claims his family abandoned him during a time when his ex-girlfriend was the subject of intense media scrutiny and public scrutiny. He said that when he asked his relatives for help, they said that they had to go through the same thing with their partners, so there was no reason to treat his partner any differently. The first book in the Harry Meghan series was discussed by hosts Zoe Forsey and Russell Myers on last week's episode of the Daily Mirror podcast pod Save the King. Harry didn't say it was explicitly about William and Charles, but there's really no one else it could have been, according to Ms. Forsey's analysis of his comments. In an apparent reference to Kate, Harry criticized the treatment of women who marry into the royal family saying that his mother taught him about the sorrow and suffering of women marrying into our institution. During Harry's speech, a picture of the Princess of Wales and the words Princess in Trouble appeared on the screen. In a later episode, Meghan mentions the two of them meeting for a relaxed meal at Kensington Palace. Ms. Forsey and Mr. Myers argue that the portrayal of the Duchess is unfair and unfortunate, and that it reflects poorly on the Prince and Princess of Wales. In episode 2, Meghan discussed the meal while the future Duchess of Sussex was in ripped pants and barefoot. I had a soft spot for squeezing in close. Embracing others has always been one of my favorite things to do. I didn't realize that was so shocking to many Britons, she said. I think I knew right away that the exterior formality continued inside, the speaker said. Mr. Meyer said, Kate and William come in for quite bruising meetings, while Ms. Markle said, I am a hugger. Some people in Britain, I think, would say that Americans are overly dramatic and sentimental. Also, William and Kate are pretty stiff upper-lipped as representatives of the British royal family, so that went over like a lead balloon, he said. While it's true that Harry and Meghan are laid-back individuals who have made it their mission to update the monarchy, it would be a mistake to think they can simply use a bulldozer to crush the institution's centuries-long tradition. It's important not to disregard the mostly vintage tones contained within it. Considering Kate and William are generally nice people, first found that to be particularly horrible. Ms. Forsey said, this was the early days of their relationship, and they didn't know that they weren't going to break up six months later. They thought it would work out, and I am sure they did. People are used to selling tales, so you have to be careful around them. It's not surprising, because trust is something you have to work for. Mr. Myers continued, I thought that was an unjust reading of the event, since everyone probably did have their guard up given the lack of universal hugs, jokes, and laughter. When I said, I didn't realize it would be that shocking and the simple fact that these bunches are all the same, I tainted the entire group in my mind. It just seemed a little too intimate for my taste. The Duke admitted that he felt pressure to marry someone who met the standards of the royal family rather than the woman he truly loved. There may be a temptation or impulse to marry someone who would fit the mold rather than someone who you may be destined to be with, he said. Men can see it very plainly, in particular. After his mother, Princess Diana, died in a car crash in Paris when Harry was only 12 years old, Harry elaborated on the ways in which he and his mother were similar. Without a doubt, my mother made most, if not all, of her choices based on her emotions. And my mother gave birth to me. Many people took Harry's remark as a jab at William and Kate's relationship, 
with the assumption that he was suggesting that William only married Kate to fit the template. Ms. Forsey recalled that she felt a bit of a jab at William from the remark. No matter how you feel about William and Kate, first don't think you can argue with the fact that they are madly in love. That's where they first met, and it's clear in the pictures that they eventually fell in love with one another. It just seemed like Harry was being a little harsh when he said things like, they're together because she was the best candidate for the royal position, but I didn't do that. In the end, Mr. Myers speculated that Harry and Meghan were implying their specialness by choosing to marry for love rather than convention. According to Harry and William's mutual friends, he was making a sly reference to the Prince and Princess of Wales. This past week, a reader of the Times remarked, that was so cheeky, that's a love match if there ever was one. Catherine doesn't fit the mold because she isn't even a blue blood or an earl's daughter. Unfortunately, Harry and Catherine had a strong emotional connection. During Thursday's airing of Harry Meghan, another member of the King's family said, It is just terrible to see the King watching that show. That begs the question. Why on earth would they do that? I hope to impress upon them the importance of planning ahead. Think about how you might regret this decision down the road. Word on the street is that William and Kate have decided against watching the documentary. According to a mutual friend, William has made it abundantly clear that he does not want us to take the current disagreement to a more serious level. He's hoping for a routine week this week. I told him to keep his gun focused at the target and not get distracted, even if it's all f asterisk 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 ing tiresome in every respect, said another advisor to the prince. The third and final episode of the season will air on Thursday, December 15. While the first trailer for the sequel focused on Harry and Meghan's wedding dance, the two that followed hinted at more personal topics discussed between the Sussexes. In the trailer that dropped on Monday, Harry addresses the camera and says, They were pleased to lie to protect my brother. One cannot tell whether he is speaking to the palace or the press. The trailer was shared on both Netflix's main website and its Twitter feed. Harry is supposedly addressing the press in the first version, while the palace is mentioned in the second. It is expected that the palace and the media will come under fire in the series finale. Following the explosive teaser, many have high hopes that the Prince and Duchess of Sussex will dive deeper into their strained relationship with William and Kate. Katie Nichol, author of William and Harry, Behind Palace Walls, says that given that Meghan has rehashed several old stories in the first three episodes, it is likely that she will revisit the story over who made who cry at a bridesmaid dress fitting for Princess Charlotte in advance of Meghan's 2018 wedding to Prince Harry. Reports at the time stated otherwise, but in 2021 during an interview with Oprah, Meghan insisted that Kate was the one who made her cry. Meghan and Harry, she said, likely had additional instances where they felt exposed and fed to the wolves. The palace will be watching events closely and may feel compelled to make a statement. In your opinion, how low a low can Harry and Meghan go with their evil scheme? Leave your feedback in the comment section. That this video has been of some use to you is our sincere wish. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed this newsletter, stay tuned for more. Goodbye.